AMD have now launched two more cards into that arsenal. We've got the 7700 XT and the 7800 XT. I've kindly been sent both of these by Scan, one of the UK retailers that supply a massive different range of products. Now they've kindly sent out, as I said, the 7700 XT and the 7800 XT. I'm going to go against the grain because everyone seems to be covering the 800 XT to begin with. I'm going to go for the more affordable option cover this one first and then you'll see the next video is the 7800 XT but this is the power color fighter the 12 gigabyte variant so RDNA 3 again this is a six nanometer process with 3456 stream processors we've got a core clock of 2226 megahertz and a boost of 2585 megahertz there are a few different overclock models available as well but it seems that the overclocking headroom on these cards is so marginal now that you generally don't see that much of an improvement going into the box i'm not actually expecting to see that much in terms of extras maybe even if anything um, it's really dense foam so of course we have got the 7700 xt and then anything else oh literally nothing else so <laughs> i expected not a lot but there's nothing at all included but bear in mind this is the budget you know of the 7700 xts so that'll probably be why and there we go so immediately very similar styling to the 6800 xt now dimensions wise this is 303 millimeters long by 128 high and then 50 mil or two and a half slots thick just in case you're wondering for you know specific cases and things like that i've already told you about the bores and things like this but of course this is the 12 gigabytes of gdr6 nice thin array with the heat sink saw this on the previous card always very densely packed seems to have one two three four heat pipes on this one this is also using two eight pins like we saw with the 6800 xt the recommended spec is a 750 watt i'd personally go a little bit above that just so you've got a bit of headroom if you were to upgrade in the future on the front we've got three 90 millimeter fans for cooling each of these have got nine blades this does also have the zero rpm mode when it's less than 60 degrees like we saw on the 6800 xt so really nice and quiet when it's not under load you can see the four heat pipes on the end of the car there's also some points for a anti-sag bracket and then going on to the back we're going to see a really nice brushed metal back plate give it some nice rigidity as well in terms of flex of the card like you can hear some fins moving about but it's very very rigid you might need a little bit of you know propping at the other end depending on uh, what kind of case you're using and things underneath you can see more of those fins there's no rgb on this card so it is a more stealthy model and you can actually see where the switch would be on the pcb so they're obviously using the same pcb for a couple of different models same goes for the oc mode as well on the top left of the card in terms of connectivity on the end we've got support for four monitors we've got three displayport 2.1 and there's one HDMI 2.1, and that's a maximum of 7,680 by 4,320, or otherwise 8K resolution, any combination up to that. Just quickly putting it with the 6800 XT, very small in comparison. I thought it was gonna be roughly the same kind of dimensions, but you can see it's quite dwarfed in terms of the height as well, certainly not as high. So yeah, a lot smaller than I expected it to be, not what she said. So now let's get this into our test rig and see how it performs. So the graphics card test bench is an Intel 12900K that's at stock on the Asus Z690 Hero. We've got 32 gigabytes of Kingston Fury RGB. That's a 5600 megahertz. Then we've got the OS running from a Seagate Fire Cooler 530, one terabyte. Cooling is the Corsa H170i Elite LCD. And then it's all contained in the Fantex Etho 2 Pro case. So first up, one of the hot topics at the moment, which is Starfield and apparently how it's you know really not working very well. Um, but we're going to go for a high preset just to see what happens. Motion blur is off, VSync is off. Let's see how we get on. Now I'm going to be testing in 1440p. I think that's going to be the sweet spot for this card. For anyone wondering at 4K, I will talk about that more in the conclusion. I think I'll run a few games, maybe Far Cry will try in 4K, just to give you an idea of what you could expect from it if you want to run that. But realistically, the majority of people will be using this at 1440 as a quick side note, I am recording this using OBS, so the frames that you'll see on the screen, you could expect a little bit more, maybe like 2 or 3% uh, without recording at the same time, but I just thought I'd mention it just so you know. And currently in space, we're about 60 frames, so we're a console rate, and that's all right, I guess. Let's go onto a planet and find someone to shoot uh, to get some you know, nice textures. Actually, let's just shoot this thing here. This will do. 60 frames. It's, it's sat fairly well at 60 frames. 
Um, my aim is atrocious, as you can tell. I've definitely taken on the wrong kind of person here, but you know, it's for FPS, so we should not worry about that. I'm gonna probably die as well, uh, 60 frames. Um, let's repair the hole if we can. Oh, no, I'm, I'm certainly dead, 60, yeah. I'm gonna quickly land and see what performance is like on a planet. We're still sat around 60 frames, so console frame rates course people would like to see a lot higher than that kind of sitting around 100 frames at a high setting for something that's not overly intense either cyberpunk is one of our titles that we test and that's going to be way more demanding um, so certainly some optimization needs to be done but at 1440p high you can expect around 60 frames with the 7700 xt for dirt 5 i'm using a high preset everything turned up as far as we possibly can even the ray trace vehicle shadows as well of course v-sync is off and then we're going to go back into the benchmark to see what FPS we get. And the results are in. So an average of 120. That's actually pretty good. I was expecting a little bit less. So certainly in the realms of using a 120 hertz monitor, even for 144 if you want to turn down your settings a little bit. But yeah, really good result there. So now let's jump into our next game. For Apex Legends, we're pretty much cranked in terms of our settings. There are a few things that are a little bit lower. So texture filtering, the budget, and also there's some spot detail. But otherwise... Yeah, it certainly is tanned up. I use a practice range for this one. I've got a little bit of a preset thing that I do, um, just so I know it's fairly you know, similar between the graphics cards that we test. So let's see what FPS we're gonna get. Currently it's sitting around 170 frames. This is one of the games that doesn't seem to show up frame view for some reason, so if it doesn't, I apologize. And then we're going to take down this thing here. With all those texts in our face, 177 there and then a little jump 157 180 so after taking out a few more enemies i didn't see anything less than 127 that was a bit of a dip though generally setting around 170 frames 150 you know when the action's really going but certainly enough for a high refresh rate monitor so for crisis i've used the high preset i will turn motion blur off i've got ray tracing off to start with we'll see what kind of impact that goes because I know a lot of people don't actually like to use ray tracing anyway. So let's see what FPS we get to begin with. So running up that hill, we see 100 frames. 108. Get into some actual gameplay. The spray and pray. 125. 152. A bit of a jump there. This is a game that is known for uh, some peaks and troughs with FPS. My aim is atrocious, you can tell I don't play these games very often. Um, 99, 77 on the 1% low. And I'm dead. So, mm, around 120 frames as a general rule of thumb. Let's turn ray tracing on to, let's go for high to match. So up the hill now about 85, so significant dip actually with those frame rates. 78 low 1% low 54 there so 44 certainly impacts the uh, FPS quite drastically so if you're someone that isn't worried about using ray tracing then this is certainly a game that's going to benefit from that being off oh I got shot again so around 120 frames without ray tracing and about 85 with so it does obviously give quite a big performance hit but those of you guys that don't like to use ray tracing will get a nice FPS boost. For Cyberpunk, we're going to turn FSR off to begin with, just to see what raw performance we get. Everything else is set to high. I'm going to turn motion blur off as well because it's trash. And then see how we go with just the raw grunt of the card. I don't expect a lot because this is very demanding. But that being said, we're at 104 frames. A little bit lower there, 103 not actually too bad let's turn ray tracing on and let's go for reflections and shadows and see how we get on now this is where it cripples it oh it's crashed oh no that's all right <laughs> oh it definitely feels laggy now down to 35 frames oof ray tracing is the crippler Let's now enable FSR and see what benefit we get from it. So I'm going to go for a balanced one with 0.8 on sharpening. 
735 up to 90 56 a bit of a dip there my camera cut out but if you're willing to play with non-ray trace graphics you can get about twice the performance which is certainly something it certainly does feel really buttery smooth as well once i've turned that ray tracing off you do cut your frames in half by using ray tracing but you can bring them back up a little bit with some support by fsr Far Cry 6, the default we run is high. We've got anti-aliasing at TAA, and then of course motion blur is off like everything else. And we'll test it in the benchmark to keep everything nice and fair. Average of 102 there on 1440p. It's not too bad considering we are running on a high setting with TSA anti-aliasing. Big old dip there down to 22 frames at just after 18 seconds. That's a little bit strange. Maximum of 125, but you could obviously bring your frame rate down a little bit if you want to stick around 120 frames for a high refresh monitor. So a little bit of an ad lib outro for this one. I want to get this video out for you guys as soon as I can because it obviously is a new launch. Um, very hot in this room at the moment, 27.1. And then we saw a high hotspot of 88 degrees. Gives us a delta of 61.9. Nice. Take out the one. Um, but certainly very good frame rates for the games I tested. Star Cry was a cluster. Um, Star related, pun. There's a lot of optimization that needs to be done with that game clearly because running on high frames and getting 60 frames is obviously not great. Loads of complaints about that, but that's a whole other story. And we will be testing that further when new drivers come out, especially as we're going to do a comparison to the 6800 XT as well. So stay tuned, doing the browser, you didn't miss that. No coil wine from the card to report, which is great. Did hear a little bit from the 6800 and also my 6750 XT video. That was you know, very noticeable. Uh, something I didn't touch on in the video itself, but I did pin comments afterwards. But yeah, nothing from this one, which has been really nice. Totally stealthy design as well, so no RGB to talk about on this one. Some will like it, some won't, but you do have loads of other models. The Howhound is a especially RGB um, one if you wanted to get something with lights on it, but uh, the option's there for you. I did also run a 3D Mark as well, which is a free download that you can do yourself if you want to have a little you know, dabble and see what your performance of whatever card you're running now would be against this one. So like I mentioned, around 100 frames for most of those games with a couple of exceptions, which is very good at 1440p. 4K is a challenge for this card, it's around 65 frames using the same settings on Far Cry 6. So not something you're really gonna step into at this kind of price point, especially because you need a 4K monitor, which is a high refresh rate as well, if you wanna really crank the frames. I've been waffling for so long that my camera cut out, but pretty good price to performance at 1440p. I will add the links in the description box if you want to pick one up. Let me know what you want to see in terms of builds and things like that. Anything you think it would work for in a theme. I'm always open to ideas like that. Um, get subscribed and do the browser so you miss the comparison videos we're going to do. And of course, any other builds. Big thank you to the team at Scan for sending this out for me to look at. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you all in the next one.